Hello, welcome back to Rabbits Forever. So today I wanted to show you, kind of do a breed identification. If you've never looked at, for today, an Angora or you haven't even seen a bunny and you're trying to decide whether it's purebred or not because you kind of have your doubts or you just want to be 100% positive before you buy it. Whether it's good quality or not, this is for show purposes, like I said, this channel is. And today I want to show you how to identify an English Angora. So, but before I get into that, sorry for not being very active lately on the channel. Because, Daisy, sorry, my dog's trying to eat rabbit food. Um... Lately, we've had about three um, massive wasp nests in the table, and just the other day, I was trying to do this exact video, and we, Honey and I, got swarmed by wasps. Luckily, nobody got stung or hurt or anything like that. We just got swarmed by them, and I chose to not go any further just because I didn't want him or me to get hurt. Especially my dog over here, too, because she decides she wants to bite at them if anybody else has dogs that do that. <clears throat> but to get back to the video, the number one identifying feature on an English Angora is these facial furnishings. So I'll scoot them up a bit closer to the camera. See if it'll focus. Alright. So like this head furnishing, typically they'll take videos of them or take a picture of him with it down like that but I usually pull it up out of his eyes <clears throat> they also have these facial furnishings right here he decides to stay still all across his cheeks <clears throat> sorry all across his cheeks and this is just supposed to basically cover his entire head he's not in full coat right now so it doesn't it's kind of just a fluff and then another thing is are these ear tassels their ears should be completely covered in wool. And they should have a cute little tassel look to them. Because, like, his ear stops at about right here. And see how much wool still extends out of it? And usually it's longer and thicker, but his actually never came in until he was about a year, year and a half old. And the reason for that is just because he's a wooler quality. He's not really... A good show rabbit. Another good thing to focus on about these animals is that they're going to be a commercial breed. And I'll actually bring out another one of my bucks to show you because obviously with all this wool it's very difficult to show that. But basically you just compact them like this and you can kind of see it with him is that he's going to be a bit longer than your compact but basically he he just doesn't want to work with me today um i also don't usually play with him like this just because i just use him for his wool i just use him for loves and cuddles and just playing with his wool basically that's all i do but yeah you basically put their shoulders flat to the table and i'll do another video on how to identify whether it's a compact commercial full arch or um, cylindrical and there's a few more too and I'll be I'll show you how to identify different rabbits in future videos. Wool is pretty obvious. It's the longest fur you'll ever get and it's not actually fur. It is wool. It's 100% wool. It's like I said before not fur and yeah it'll get out to like right here kind of thing. So it's the longest thing you'll ever come in contact with and rabbits and for some reason he's thinking he's a netherland dwarf today because <laughs> this is how you pose netherland dwarfs right here he's a good looking netherland dwarf <laughs> he's a funky looking netherland dwarf but so for the english angoras like i said they are a com or a commercial breed i believe it's either compact or commercial i'm pretty po i'm pretty positive it's commercial but they, both compact and commercial, have a lot of similarities in their type. 
and how you pose them and raise them. It's just commercials more meant for meat breeds. He's not really a meat breed and that's why I question whether it's a compact or a commercial. But um, they're still posed about the same. Commercial's just going to be a bit more elongated. But so like I said, that's basically how you tell their face. When you're looking at an English Angora, or looking for an English Angora, if they don't have all of this, they're a different breed. They're either a French Angora, a Mutt, a German Angora, a Giant Angora. I mean, there's a lot of different Angoras out there. But the English Angora is the only one with this facial furnishings, with these facial furnishings. And they have a lot softer coat as well than a lot of the others, but you know what, if you've never dealt a lot softer and a finer coat, let's say that, but it's still dense, it's just that the wool itself is finer because they don't have a lot of guard hairs or anything, but let's just say that you've never looked at an Angora before in your life and you don't know what to look for, when you're picking out your English Angora, you look for these facial furnishings. It's adorable, they're fun. And I personally love this breed. I honestly don't think I'll ever get into actually breeding these animals. I may have one or two as pets because they are a wonderful animal. But to go into their temperament wise, like I said, amazing animals. I love them to death. Most calm, relaxed, just kid friendly beginner friendly everything they're amazing rabbits like see I, I'm picking him up like this and he's not freaking out he is also older so he's used to being picked up like that he's used to being handled he's not um he's not very uh, how do I put this He's not a kit anymore, so he doesn't have all that energy. He's not spastic. Like, I don't know if you can hear my kit in his cage right now. He's about eight weeks old right now, and whenever he sees me, he goes nuts. Not that he's angry or scared of me. It's just he gets so excited. It's like dealing with a toddler. They get so excited, and they constantly have energy, so they're running back and forth and going crazy. When you get an older rabbit, about a year to two years old, they're like him, very relaxed. He's just sitting here, still pretending to be a Netherland dwarf. And they're a lot just, in my opinion, they're a lot easier to work with, a lot better rabbits. But you have to have a kit before you get this. <laughs> so like I said, their temperament is amazing. Absolutely an incredible breed. I love this breed, but like I said, the reason why I don't think I'll ever breed these gorgeous animals is because there's so much maintenance, so much work. If you don't have the proper equipment, I personally don't think that there's any way you could properly keep these animals, or at least this animal in general. Other Angoras. I'd say you can easily keep them even without the proper equipment for show animals, but this breed of the English Angora in particular, their wool is so delicate and so just high maintenance that I don't think you could properly keep them in the right health if you didn't have the equipment. Like I said in a previous video, you have to have a blower and a slicker brush. And the blowers, if you get an actual blower, an actual professional one that you're supposed to use on them, not one that I use on them, they can range anywhere from two to $500. And that's after you purchase a one to $300 rabbit or more, depending where and who you buy it from and what genetics it carries. So these animals, and that's just for one rabbit. I understand after you have the group, after you have the blower and the slicker brush and all the other equipment that comes with these animals that just makes your life just that much easier. 
you have it for the rest of your life, basically. Because they don't burn out as easily. And so you'll have it for years and years down the road. So then all you have to do is focus on your rabbits. But at the same time, for the initial purchase... It's definitely, the English Angora is definitely not a pet rabbit unless you're willing to put that money and the time in. For instance, for him, I have to spend about an hour on him every day for about every other day of the week. So each grooming session, I spend about an hour on him, like I said, every other day. So I... And, you know, I'm not very good with him. That's why I keep his wool short. Because he is a wooler. His wool mats easily. It's not... I mean, he has decently dense wool, especially the further you go down. But that's kind of how every animal is. The more you go down to the base, the belly area, and the rear end, they tend to get a lot more dense than this top area. But... Like I said with this breed, I don't recommend it as a pet breed. If you're looking for an Angora, I would definitely recommend a different breed of Angora. Like a French. French are an amazing breed. Satins are amazing. They still have the same temperament, but different wool qualities, which make them mat up not nearly as easy, and they don't take nearly as much time and energy to put into the breed. Other good ones are like American Fuzzy Lops, which is actually a newer breed. Sorry, I'm trying to pick wool off as there's a breeze going by and it keeps throwing wool all over me. American Fuzzy Lops are a newer breed. They're actually a Holland Lop mixed with Angoras. And they're a beautiful breed, absolutely gorgeous. You still get the wool, but very low maintenance. And you actually get the Lopped Ears, which I know is very popular in the pet world. And in, the rab and in the rabbit world in general, just because lobbed ears are adorable. That's what you're seeing as a kid and stuff like that in movies. They're just adorable. They're not your common rabbit that you go by in a pet store every day. But, oh, and another one is like, for instance, the, oh, what's it called? Jersey Wooly. It's a Netherland dwarf crossed with an Angora again. Beautiful animals, super cute, very small. They're not larger like him, and he's not even a large breed. He's actually the smallest Angora breed you're going to get. And he's still not very small. See, this is him against me. I'm about six foot, and he's still he's about that long to me. So he's a pretty he's still a pretty larger ra rabbit. This is your typical size of rabbit that you're actually gonna get. You see in movies and stuff like that that the rabbits are really small and people can just cuddle them up right onto their chest. And that's a baby. That's honestly a baby rabbit. Unless you go with smaller breeds. But as I said in a previous video, smaller breeds tend to be a lot more... have more aggressive tendencies and are more spastic. They're more um, skittish and all that stuff. But you can watch that in a previous video. In one of my previous videos. Yeah, this breed, like I said, love them, but there's so much maintenance that I would not suggest it as a first-time breeder. And I would suggest you getting all of the equipment before you ever get the rabbit, just because you have to have it to take properly take care of your and English Angora. But just to recap, if you're looking at breeds, this is the key part of the English Angora, is these adorable facial furnishings. They're an amazing breed, perfect temperament. I'd say almost all Angoras have that perfect temperament. You always have that exception, though. Never get a doe if you're just doing pets, or if you're just having a wooler or something like that and you don't plan on breeding, just because they are more spastic. They still have good temperaments, they're just not nearly as friendly, not nearly as... Um, sociable. For instance, he'll come out of his cage every day to say hi to me and my dogs. Um, and he is a commercial breed, which, like I said, is a bit more elongated, but they are still pretty compact. And I'll pull, I'll do another video on all that later. But, yeah. 
not definitely not a first time owner rabbit because they are difficult if you're doing it as pet i'd say keep their coat short so just um put the wool in between your fingers and cut right on top of your fingers so that way you don't end up cutting their skin or anything plus it keeps their wool nice and short so that way you're not worried about mats or anything like that Definitely get a slicker brush and a blower if you plan on getting their wool any longer than that because it does mat up super quickly and it's very difficult to get out once they get mats and the mats will go all the way down to their skin to where it's difficult to cut them out. But again, amazing animals. I love this breed. I'm very sad to be selling this boy because he is so amazing and loving and sociable and just like the perfect all around rabbit. But I am glad to free up some time during my week because he is just that much work. But this is honey for y'all. And this will probably be the last time you're able to see him. He is, again, an amazing breed. Definitely fun to work with, but again, definitely not a first time owner's rabbit. Have a wonderful day. Thank you for watching.